Hello and welcome to another video from here at Odd Autos. This video is about my latest project that I've only just finished. I have to say it was the most frustrating project I've ever done, delving into something I've never done before. I nearly gave up on it a few times, but I stuck through and got it finished. And I have to say it is one of the best cars I've ever made. So without further ado, let's go and have a look at it. And here it is folks, a 1958 Auto Union 36, which I now call the Odd Union. For those of you who don't know, Auto Union was a car manufacturer in Germany, which later became known as Audi. I bought this car in January 2019 from South Africa. Had it shipped over, it arrived in March, I did a few bits and bobs, got it registered and on the road. And all was good, for a little bit anyway. The engine started tapping and it started smoking out the back. Now this engine was a 900cc two stroke and they smoke a bit anyway, but this was like the car version of the Red Arrows. Everywhere you drove, clouds of blue smoke behind you. So two stroke, easy to strip down, stripped it down and you could see it had been bodged in South Africa just to get it sold. So I was left with a choice. I could get a reconditioned engine, put it in the car, but then the car and the engine would owe me more than what I could sell it for. So I had to come up with a plan. That plan was to convert it to fully electric. Now I was hoping getting a donor car and all the bits to control the electric, I'd sink into it, but I'd still make some money at the end of it. So here's what we did. So next we took all the fuel system off and stripped it down ready for paint. Now choosing the paint colours, being in the Audi family, I wanted to stick with Audi colours. So we two-toned it and went with Daytona Metallic Pearl Grey and Audi Florette Silver and all that chrome, which I don't really like, we painted in a metallic Audi Black. Next up was what donor car to buy to take the motor and batteries out of. After a lot of research, I went for a Generation 1 Nissan Leaf. They're fairly cheap and there's loads about. So I went out and got one for £5,000. Then I looked into what runs the motor and the batteries and all of it comes from America. You just can't get any companies over here that do it. So I bought an Orion 2 battery management system and a Thunderstruck charger and DC-DC. What a DC-DC does is basically like a car's alternator. So you've got 400 volts in the high voltage battery pack and you still need your 12 volt battery to run stuff like the lights and the heater. So this DC-DC takes the high voltage, drops it down to 13.5 volts and charges a normal car battery. So the motor out the leaf was about this big. Doesn't weigh much, it's water cooled, so needs a radiator, but doesn't really produce that much heat. So you don't need a fan, it just radiates the heat itself. Let's have a look. So down here we've got our new motor. The new motor is 110 horsepower, which is pretty much more than double what the original was. I wanted to keep the old Auto Union box because it's got a cool column shift inside. So I made myself an adapter plate to join the two together. Also in there is a little intermediate shaft that I made to join the output of the motor and the input of the gearbox. On top here, we have an inverter. What that does is take the single phase 400 volts and converts it to three phase. Basically, this leaf motor is just a three phase motor. I fitted an electric water pump that comes in when you turn the ignition on. So at the back here, I had to get rid of the original heater and fit an electric one out of a rally car. Inside this inverter is the main ECU that controls the motor and I got that ECU from PNS Power Electronics. I have to say they are a great company. I'd never programmed one before and they talked me through it and it runs perfectly. Let's take a look inside and I'll show you the ECU. Here's the original ECU that used to run the leaf motor. And as you can see, the one you get from PNS Power Electronics is pretty much identical. All the little black connectors fit straight on. It was just the main connector I had to repin. 
And down here on the side, I've added a little connection port so I can plug the computer in to program the engine. And it's pretty much as simple as that. Obviously, with all these high voltage electrics, there's a main fuse to disconnect the battery from everything else. It was in the leaf and I transferred it to this car so I wouldn't be touching any of this while that fuse was still in. And seeing as we're down at the front, the grill I made myself wanted it to look a bit sort of Tesla-esque and also the number plate the original ones were quite big and bulky so what I did I got on the 3D printer and made those too. Right let's go round to the back and look at the batteries. Right under this carpet is the batteries and the battery controller. Here's the fuse I was on about earlier and there's still loads of boot space. So I took the battery pack out of the Nissan Leaf and I had to rearrange the cells so they would fit in here. I made the battery box and bolted it all through the floor. Over here is the Orion 2 battery management system. What this basically does is controls the voltage within the battery. It also controls if the battery gets too hot and how much power the engine can take and regenerate power back into the batteries. Over here on the left is the high voltage solenoids. What they do is when you turn the ignition on, they cut in and allow power up to the motor. And when you turn the ignition off, they cut out again and it keeps everything safe. Also, they cut in when you charge. This little box in the middle is the Thunderstruck charge controller. It talks to the battery management system and asks if the battery needs charging. If the battery management system says yes, it then clicks on the charger which is underneath the car and allows the batteries to charge. I had to put the charger underneath the car because it gets very hot. It's also water cooled but does need a cooling fan because of the heat it produces. I rigged up an automatic temperature sensor that cuts an electric water pump in when it gets to 39 degrees and then at 40 degrees a miniature heater matrix and fan cuts in and cools the system down. So this battery now runs about 320 volts if it's flat and 400 volts when it's full. Right, time to plug in the charger. So the charging port was pretty ugly. So what I did was 3D print a cap with the odd union logo on just to cover it up. Nice and tight fit, isn't going to fall off when you're driving. Right, let's give it a charge. Contact is clicking and then it starts charging. While it's charging, I'll take you through the interior, but because we're still on lockdown, we'll only go for a drive around the yard, maybe tank it round a field at the back. Here's the interior. So inside we kept the original door cards and seats and just gave them a really good clean. And then the steering wheel and all the switch knobs were beige. So we've painted them in the silver to match the roof. And as I said before, I kept the column change because that's real cool too. Anything that was chrome, we've painted black. And my mate Austin came over and replaced the headliner because the old owner must have smoked a pipe or something. You could scratch the crud off with your nails. It was gross. The only disappointing thing I would say about the battery management system is it comes with a real nasty cheap looking gauge. But what I did, I 3D printed a holder, sunk it into that and then mounted it where the original fuel gauge was. I also tinted the lens a bit because the LEDs were really bright and I thought it might be a bit dazzling at night. So we took the clutch pedal out and fitted the throttle pedal from the Nissan Leaf. As I say, you put it in third, it pulls off nicely in third and it'll get up to 65, 70 mile an hour, no problems at all. The old Leaf was running 110 horsepower and it used to do about 100 miles range. In this, I've wound it down just so it don't put too much pressure through the gearbox. So I'm thinking I should get about 150, 160 miles range out of that. Right, let's stop talking and go for a rip around the yard.
So this was a different video for you guys, a lot more talking, but hopefully you've learned a little about what goes into one of these EV conversions. This project definitely had its ups and downs. The downs being the cost and the steep learning curve that goes into one of these conversions. But the ups, just look at it. The finished result is mint.